what is up i don't know how good the um internet connection is here but um it has definitely been a very long time and um honestly the only reason i'm on instagram live right now is in case you guys because I, I feel like i've haven't really been um active you know and i'm sure a lot of the fans are probably you know um war I, I mean i see a lot of word comments so this is just an update that i'm okay and i'm just i guess working very hard the team is working very hard and um yeah obviously if you guys know us you shouldn't worry so i mean that's pretty much it like <laughs> i've been um just working very hard and um i'm sure it's all gonna be worth it at the end of the day and i just felt like i had to let you guys know um you know in case you guys were worried <laughs> but anyway um that's that and um so how has everyone been been how's everyone been <laughs> um i know it's been a while um i'm definitely trying to stay healthy um yeah I've been trying to stay healthy, I've been trying to probably tell I lost a bit of weight, but that's because, I don't know, I guess I've been, I've been exercising a lot of cardio, um, so that's always good. Uh, hello from Egypt, how are you guys doing? I mean, I, honestly, yeah, overall, I missed, I missed you guys, um, I'm sure it's I come very randomly and it's it's always a but <laughs> as you guys could tell my hair is pretty long right now my hair is actually really long i'm trying to i'm again I've, i i think this is the longest i've ever stuck to trying to grow it out if you know what i mean i was you know you know you, i mean it's all for you so yeah i just didn't want to leave you guys in the dark too i just you know you know we're still alive just letting you guys know we're still alive <laughs> so i mean yeah i just maybe today's a good time to i don't know answer a few questions and just kind of interact with you guys a lot more you know you're, someone says they're sleepy thank you for updating no worries i feel like it's only right you know you guys deserve it so uh i lost a lot of weight um yeah i mean i've, I've been exercising a lot maybe um show your hair please I don't know, I don't know if that's a good idea. It's it's really messy right now. Hence, which is why I have my beanie on because my hair is really long right now and I do not know how to um yeah, I don't know how to control long hair. It's I've never I don't know. I I've, I've grew out my front hair this long, but I don't think I've um stuck with it. 
which is probably why. 건강 챙기세요. 감사합니다. 건강 건강이 우선이죠, 그렇죠, 여러분. 그래서 항상 정신적으로도 건강이 우선인 것 같고 그 다음에 약간 몸 건강이긴 한데 왜냐면 정신이 건강해야지 몸도 건강하거든요. 그렇지 않아요? 그렇죠. 근데 요즘 되게 되게 많은 안 좋은 일들 때문에 세상에 사람들이 많이 힘들어하죠. 근데 저는 항상 음, 잘될 거라고 믿어요. Always. 그게 사람의 힘이지 않을까요? 근, 긍정적인 힘. Thank you. I mean, I, I love you guys too. Um, turn on your, your phone. Is the, is the connection okay, by the way? Because it's, I feel like maybe the, the internet connection here is pretty bad. You know, I'm not gonna lie. So, just wanted to make sure it was okay. Tam, tam, ah, I cost here. I always use I cost, but I just want to do it now. 연초는 안 펴요 저는 약간 그거면 조금 냄새도 그렇고 뭐 이것도 뭐 그렇, 그닥 그렇게 좋진 않지만 그쵸 뭔가 촬영하다 보면 <웃음> 피게 되더라고요 힘들어서 피는 건 아니에요 근데 This is my hair everyone wants to, want, everyone wants to see my hair So, hair is. 머리. <laughs> 진짜. 지금, it's really messy, so. Um, it's very long. So, I mean, I'm still in the process of growing it out, but it's. Yeah, I didn't cut it. So, um. But anyway. Um, you guys have any uh, questions? I'll, I'll gladly I'll gladly try answering as much as I can because uh, I know I don't, I'm not really active so Well, I don't know if you have any 제가 업데이트나 뭐 일, 여기에 잘안 들어오긴 해가지고 들어와 와 있을 때 약간 여러분들의 뭐 질문이나 뭐 이런 거를 많이 뭔가 대답을 해줘야 될것 같아서 죄송해 머리 I'm gonna wear the hat again 머리가 너무 길어가지고 눈을 계속 찌르네요 죄송합니다. I can't see because my hair is like so long, it's kind of poking my eyes, so I just have to... Uh, that's why I wear the beanie, because I just, I, I can't seem to look around, you know? This time, I'm wearing a song. That's right. Now, the time is 2.40 hours. So, it's good time. 저는 좀 늦게 자가지고 잔잔한 노래보다 약간 분위기 있는 노래이지 않을까요? 음. 그러면 그거 한번 생각을 생각해 볼게요 제가. How's the gang doing? Um, everyone's yeah, everyone's busy. Everyone is very busy and um, everyone is very occupied doing their own thing. Um. So yeah, I mean, you know, you obviously got, you guys obviously know what it means when we're busy, so 
I mean, yeah, that's everyone's doing fine. Everyone's great. The whole team, you know. Lori, Lori's not here. Lori is um at home actually. So, Lori, 나중에 I'll I'll show you guys Lori. Lori ha Lori's the same. She's very, <laughs> she's very um, she's yeah, she's happy. I don't know. I don't. I can't really tell if a dog's happy, but I'm sure she's happy. You know. Uh, 좋아하는 야식. 야식 좋아하는 야식. 저는 약간 애기 입맛이어서 단 거를 되게 좋아해요. 당 떨어져서 단걸 좋아하는 건가? 나이가 들어서 그건가? 저는 근데 야식이라고 하면 초콜릿. I like I love chocolate. Chocolate and jelly. 뭐 아, 솔직히 초콜릿 젤리 안 좋아하는 사람이 누가 있어요? But I love chocolate and jelly um, a lot. And I feel like that's kind of always I have a craving for a lot of chocolate, a lot of jelly and um doesn't matter what kind as long as it's chocolate and as long as it's jelly I have um I'm, I can manage to devour it and devour it, devour it and in an instance. 좋아하는 가수요. 음. 저는 어렸을 때부터 so if someone asked me what my favorite artist who my favorite artist is. Honestly, I've. Uh, 저는 이제 초등학교 때부터 약간 데프트 펑크의 영감을 많이 받아가지고. Um, so I. 그리고 뭐 electric light orchestra. 그러니까 옛날 음악, 약간 옛날 소리. 그리고 초등학교 때 제가 그걸 너무 충격적으로 들어가지고. 어, 팝 이런 걸잘안 들었어요. 근데 so I remember when I was in primary school, elementary school, I I was gifted um, like a CD at the time it was a CD when I was in elementary school. And you know, you know, in elementary school, no, you don't. Well, back back then, you don't. You didn't have a MP3. It was kind of like a Walkman. Walkman 시절이었죠. CD. So you had to put a CD into. Yes, I'm a boomer. So. So I would have like a little CD player um, or Walkman you, where you put tapes in and stuff. And the first CD I was ever gifted was uh, Daft Punk Discovery, I believe. And that's when it first came out. So that's like more than, um, more than 15, 16 years ago. And I remember that was the first time I ever, being in elementary school, that was the first time I ever took in what sound and what music does to someone's feelings. 그때 아직까지 약간 너무 충격적이었어요. 음. 그래서 it's always been my influence. Um, yeah, I, I think that's kind of where it started off, you know, the whole music and you know all that kind of stuff. Core piercing 아파요. Core piercing은 음. 당연히 아프죠. 약간 뭐 어떤 피싱이든 사실 안 아픈 건 없긴 한데 근데 이렇게 생각하면 돼요. 아픈 게 약간 0.5초? 0.5초? 0.5초를 그냥 한번 약간 좀 따끔 하고 그 다음에는 안 아파요. 근데 이제 그렇게 생각하면 0.5초만 참으면 돼요. 그러면 사실 뭐 이거는 그냥 본인이 원하시면 생기는 거죠. 예. 네. <웃음> do Do you have a TikTok? I don't have a TikTok. Um, I don't know. I, I I I don't think I was ever fond of TikTok too much. I see uh, a lot of my friends and stuff. They send me they send me a lot of TikToks where uh. I'm, I'm in the TikTok, and it's it's very, it's very interesting. It's very, uh, it's pretty interesting to see um, that I have <laughs> my presence on TikTok as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, and a lot of the times, it's it's regarding my age and stuff. <laughs> oh 
shit. I can't believe I, I'm born in ninety, right? But I, I, re I, one thing I just cannot believe is, I can't believe I'm actually turning thirty this year. Can you believe that? Like I, I mean, to some of you guys, you guys might be like, holy shit, he's old. But I never, for once in my life, thought I would hear that. And I always kind of lived my life, especially my 20s, thinking like the 30 period would never come or I wouldn't be, or I really wouldn't care. But I'm not gonna lie, it starts getting to you um, when you're 29 and you realize all of a sudden everyone around you or that, who, you know, the people that you knew were just as old, we're getting married, you know, your mom, your dad, or whatever, is is obviously not as young and useful as you remember them. And, you know, it just kind of reminds you that, I guess, everything happens so quickly, so you might as well enjoy every single moment, you know. Um, I always thought worrying about something or, you know, or not even really being in a certain moment or giving it that much attention, it really deprives you from um, experiencing that moment to the utmost, if you know what I mean. So, I mean, yeah, I guess nothing lasts forever, but uh, I mean, I think that isn't that the beauty in life? It's about accepting the idea that being everything having an imper imperfection is actually the idea of perfection if you know what i mean it's so in other words it's okay that it's okay that nothing lasts forever you know it's i guess that's the beauty and that's a quality in life you know um yeah yeah do you play any games, Hyung? I play... Recent... Okay, so I used to play games a lot. Um, I used to play Dota. Dota. I used to play a lot of that. Uh, FPS games like CS. But these days, um, mobile games... There's only one game I play. Um, and it's called... Kart Rider. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know. Katrider는 제가 진짜 아 미쳐버리겠어. 그거 너무 빠지게 돼가지고 어, 어쩌다가 카트라이더를 하게 됐네요. 저는 진짜 상상도 못했는데. 아 근데 카트라이더 하면서 왜 이렇게 초반에는 진짜 못해가지고 욕을 엄청 많이 먹었어요. 근데 왜 이렇게 부모님 욕을 하는지 모르겠어요. 진짜 사람들이 아 진짜. 약간 너무 충격어가지고 아니 못하면 바로 약간 그런 식으로 공격하더라고요. 어 그래서 좀와 좀 약간 좀 무섭다고 생각했어요. 저는 욕을 못해요. 왜냐면 한국말 타자 치는 게 너무 느려가지고 딱 이제 딱 제가 뭔가 대답 답변으로 뭔가 얘기를 하려면 왜 그랬냐 하고 딱 이제 뭔가 치면. 사람 다 나가더라고요. 나가 있더라고요. 그러니까 제가 조금 타자 치는 게좀 느려가지고 그냥 포기했어요. 그냥. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys know Kart Rider, but that's like a very, it's a very common game in Korea. It's been around for a very long time. It's it's actually a PC game, and it's where like it's kind of like Mario Kart, where you have these little characters um, drifting and. It's like a car racing game. But they have like little carts. Just check it out. Mobile Kart Rider is really fun. Indonesia. Shout out to all the um, Indonesian fans. We miss you terribly. I miss you guys. Um, I miss all, all the fans around the world. I miss traveling. I miss traveling so much. Um, and you know, obviously due to uh, COVID, you know, it's it's given everyone time, I think, to self-reflect, I guess, you know, 
um, but I I do think that it will go back to normal you know it will it just takes time you know so if everyone <laughs> uh, go. hi from Brazil Arab fans definitely カツ、あの、カツライダーって、やっぱ、チャンジラメアン、チャンジラメアン、チャンジラメアン、チャンジラメアン、チャンジラメアン、チャンジラメアン、チャンジラメアン、チャンジラメアン、チャンジラメアン
아, I, I really should learn Spanish. 평소에 몇 시에, 몇 시에, 평소에 몇 시에 일어나냐고요? 평소에 저는 잠을 푹 자는 경우가 되게 드물어요. 되게 어려워가지고. 어, 약간 잠이 들면 항상 새벽에 잠이 들긴 하는데, 아니면 아침, 아침에 자요. 근데 이제 일어나면 거의 한 2시간 일어나서 또 다시 잠들려면 거의 1시간 걸리고 또 2시간 자고 바로 일어나서 그래서 약간 틈틈이 해서 뭐 스케줄 없는 날은 그냥 거의 오후까지 자죠 근데 만약에 제가 뭐에 꽂혀 있으면 예를 들면 작업이나 뭐 이런 거 그러면 거의 3시간 밖에 안 자요 왜냐면 못 자겠어요. 가만 못 있겠어요. 그, 그거를 해야 된다는 그런 압박감이나, 뭐, 신나가지고, 약간, 빨리 뭔가, 약간 성격이 급해가지고, 빨리 그거를 더 만지거나, 빨리 뭔가를 더 해야지, 약간, 마음이 편하, 편해더라고, 편해지더라고요. 예. How do you practice your vocals? Um, just every, Every morning when you take a shower, turn on your favorite song. Uh, karaoke version is the best, and I, I sing. T- I sing. I mean, doesn't everyone do that though? Like, you just you sing along to your favorite songs or your favorite instrumental. Um, but the, but when you sing it, the I guess one good thing that you should keep in mind is. You shouldn't have a bad. You shouldn't curate a bad habit. Which what I mean by that is, um, people should use their natural voice. But a lot of people tend not to use their natural voice uh, when they sing because you know it makes them cringe or they can't stand their voice. And it's completely natural. But um, if you're trying to get in key to, you know, because a lot of times if you if people who don't sing they They'll sing flat, you know. It'll be a flat or it'll be off key. Um, so, if you're ever serious about it, then um, you should get into the habit of trying to sing on that notation and try reducing being flat. So it'll be a good thing to record yourself when you sing, so you know how you sound. Like. Even if you can't stand it, it's always good practice, and you know, practice makes perfect. A lot of people like to do voice vocal exercises to warm their voices up, and you know, absolutely, I I think you should, you know. Um, so for me, that's my warm up. <laughs> yeah. Have have a good dream. Thank you. You too. I hope you have a good dream too. My voice can't relate. It's okay. I my voice. I still am very. Yeah, I I can't get used to my voice too. Even now, I'm sure there's a lot of artists out there, uh, professional artists or veterans that still aren't used to their voice, which is probably why they um they try different styles and you know whatever works for them. 저도 로리가 그립네요. 예. Please call my name. But bio. I'm sorry. I didn't see the last one. What? What time is it? It's three o'clock, which is pretty early. Um, for me, it's still very early. Yeah. Um. 안녕. 안녕. You look like a bear. I think I read that right. Yeah, I mean that's that's a first. I've I've never been called a bear. I've I've been called a lot of things, but a bear. I've been called. Um, I don't know what's what's a common animal that I've been called. Uh, I've been called a kangaroo, but I I truly believe that's because my origin is from Australia and. I make a lot of relations to that, so I've, I've been called a kangaroo before. Actually, a few times, yeah. Um, 
are you sleepy no I'm not which is which could be a problem because I yeah I'm not that sleepy that's a problem how did you learn to direct videos honestly um, I'm sure a lot of people are curious about that but I ha I didn't know I was going to become a director when I first started taking I guess um, interest in shooting videos or making it for me my key interest was I just wanted to express um, what was kind of in my head and you know it kind of started from there so uh, there was no like key goal in mind and this is and mind you this is a it's personally um, I'm saying this through personal thoughts because a lot of people are different a lot of people would want to some people want to be like amazing directors and I feel like my job as a director is to put people on the right path to do that but for me I started off as a passion project and I I just loved making films I just loved creating and um, I guess what that means is if you like something if you take interest in something um, I feel like you shouldn't put your you shouldn't categorize it as, as a certain thing where you shouldn't you shouldn't have to feel the need to pressure yourself to like have a certain title like I have to be a, a good director or I, I wish I can be a famous rapper or I wish I can be a fa famous singer um, you shouldn't put yourself in that box otherwise if you do that what you're doing to yourself is um, you're putting such a standard and you, you're putting such I guess pressure on yourself that the minute something doesn't work out um, and which obviously it will happen in that way because everyone's human and it's okay for something not to work out but the minute something doesn't work out you immediately link it to how hard it's going to be along the to get to a certain point um, and you shouldn't put yourself in that box otherwise people are more likely to give up then you know and that's not what you want the reason why the, a lot of famous directors are famous or a lot of artists are well known is because it I, I'm pretty sure it's because they you know they just didn't give up and if you're not confident I always say confidence is like you're never born confident no one's ever born like no one is ever born confident um, even if you know it's in your trade no one's ever born confident I feel like confidence comes with a lot of trial and error so it's it's the amount of I guess actions that you all right uh, low, the 20% battery thing came up so as I was saying I feel like confidence is something that you have to curate and the only way to curate that is if you start doing things that you're not comfortable with and each and every single time no matter no matter how hard, how hard it is and you feel like it's impossible to do you always find a way to conquer it and the more you find a way to conquer each problem that you face doesn't matter if it's video related if it's personal family related or if it's anything um, I think what life teaches you is you always have a problem in life and you're gonna get it so unexpectedly but the only way to overcome it is to stick through it and you know um, find a way and Trust me, I think people are the human man. Like I guess humankind is the epitome of, I guess, the species that are best at that finding a solution to any problem. You know, try, and if you don't really give it your all, then you're gonna get exactly that. You know, so 
you know, there's a reason why the greats are great. It's because they tried. And it's, and obviously it's never easy. But that's just it, isn't it? No one ever tells you it's going to be easy. Um, you know, it's really a battle against yourself, really. Um, but I think at the end of the day, literally anyone can do anything. You know, and that's a scary thought, but it's the truth. You know, uh, I feel like you have to, like, you know, like I feel like you just have to live like it's your last. You gotta treat everything like it's your last. It's hard to do, granted, but you know, just to um, give you a clear idea of what I mean is, for example, like. If someone came to you and was like, by tomorrow, you have to bring five thousand dollars or five thousand, yeah, five thousand five k, or else, like your dog dies, or or else, you know, your there's something like something bad's gonna happen to your family. Then don't you think in your mind? By tomorrow, you would do anything, any means possible to get that $5,000 because you have something huge riding on the line for you. Um, but that's just it. That's just it. That's what I mean. You have to face everything with that mentality. And that just shows you if... Because, yeah, because honestly, if you don't... If you feel like you're not putting yourself on the line for whatever you do and whatever you want to become great at, um, then it's not going to work. But if you treat it in a way where it's a must, like if you don't, if you can't, if you, it's like no matter what it takes, you're going to do it, then yeah, it, honestly, you, you, you will get it done. And I think that's like a, that's something a lot of uh, people I feel like should, I guess, realize because it doesn't always have to be a critical moment in your life for you to change or something bad that has happened to you for you to understand that I get I get the whole necessity of people experiencing um, and you know first-hand experience is the best way to let somebody know but at the same time it's it's that logic isn't it it's if you haven't tried it yet you, you should you should really give it a go and you should stick to it right like and of course, um, I guess environmentally, the people that are around you do uh, affect you ultimately. And I think that's why context is very important. If you grow up in a neighborhood where, you know, 90% of your neighborhood is affecting bad negative energy around you, then uh, yeah, you're no matter how good of a person you're born as trait wise you're you're going to be affected environmentally which is why you know i think it's also very important if you realize you're in a a toxic environment you should get your ass out there <laughs> as soon as possible because because that does really ultimately affect um how a person is and it's not even their fault you know and that's the saddest part about it um, but yeah, oh shit, I, sorry, I went too deep on that. <laughs> um, so, you know, in other words, what I'm trying to say is um, everyone's capable, you know. Everyone is capable of doing whatever they want. And I think, I think you should stop worrying, you yeah. know. I really do think people should stop caring too much about what other people think and, you know, how hard it's going to be. And, you know, like, yeah, I feel like we should just stop caring about shit like that and just do what we really want to do. Yeah. But overall, um, Mental health is, I think, number one. 
if you're not healthy mentally, you're not going to be healthy physically, and you're not going to be anywhere near helpful to those around you, even if you want to, even if you think by you cutting yourself off from people and society because you don't want to burden like burden them it's ultimately you're the one that has to be strong and healthy and the only person that can do that is yourself um yeah and no one said it's going to be easy but I, i think that's the sacrifice that you have to take i mean that's the effort isn't it Yeah, but you know, all in all, um, um, this somehow ended up turning into like a like a motivational thing. But I mean, since when has my life never really turned into that? It's either that or I talk about the most randomest shit ever. But I just kind of thought, you know, if I could somewhat use um i guess my voice in a way where it doesn't offend or it doesn't become too political or it doesn't become too one-sided i feel like the only message that anyone with a platform should ever give if you are trying to deliver a message is literally you should cater and you should really go for what you truly want to do in life um and that's a huge spectrum because so many people have different things that they want to do in life but it really does come down to that idea of can i do it or what's stopping me and you know and most of the times it's because of it's because of a lot of judgment issues and and that low is uh, a lot of self esteem and you know but i think yeah ultimately i think everyone is capable of everything and um you guys should just believe in yourself a little bit more mm. yeah so that's all i wanted to say and um it's okay to be sad it's okay to be scared um it's okay to worry you're not alone right but at the end of the day right it's you have the power to change everything it's you that matters and if you don't do anything about it then no one else will and you shouldn't expect anyone else to um and that and honestly the results and the rewards that you reap um to standing up to yourself is actually it comes to, it comes back to you in you know two folds or more and it's that much worth it you know you yeah. know yeah yeah i i damn i wish we can i wish i can go on tour and see everyone it's been so long um but soon you know i think everything happens for a reason so it's not the end of the world yet <laughs> not just yet right so as you tell me very much as you say as you can talk to this and when you're on as you can see me that i didn't want this job So I mean I know I was <laughs> I, I know a lot of I know some people don't like this deep shit. Um I I I sometimes don't like <laughs> I sometimes don't like talking about this cuz I feel like yeah I feel like you, you should just treat everything simply. You shouldn't really be deciphered. You shouldn't look too deep into something. 
because you know the saying the more you know the more you realize you don't know and i think that's kind of that's pretty dangerous because i think ignorance really is bliss you know to a certain extent <laughs> um yeah i feel like i feel like we're just our society is just uh we're becoming overly bearingly sensitive to a lot of things and that's because we think too much and um, the more you think about something the more you create a scenario in your head which you probably don't know it's like if it's even likely or possible and you scare yourself before you even you resent yourself before you even go out and you know do something because you don't know how that's going to feel like but before you even do something you you scare the shit out of yourself um, yeah and you just don't end up doing it and I think that's kind of sad you know but anyway um, on to a different topic um, I like pasta have I ever told you guys? I really like pasta. I like making pasta. I'm sure you guys know. It's kind of random. Um, I like the carbonara pasta. I like making it. And there's like an original recipe. If you go on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube these days. Um, I almost wish it wasn't. But <laughs> it's inevitable. Um, yeah. You know what I like about cook cooking? I love the idea that you can you have to go out and buy the ingredients. I think that's the fun, the most fun part about cooking for me, anyway. Cooking is one thing. Yeah, it is fun in itself, but I I find the pleasure of going out and finding specific ingredients um, to make the recipe. You know. And I think it's that sense of adventure that when you finally do obtain the ingredients that you need to cook um, and having that come together and then serving that to your loved ones or your friends. And I think that's where a lot of my the thrill comes for me, you know. I'm sure some people can relate to that, you know. Um, yeah, so I'll, uh, maybe one day I will um, turn on Instagram live and I'll cook for you guys. Because, um, yeah, I mean, that is essentially like <laughs> the one thing you can do during COVID. Um, but what else do I like? Um, I feel like I've never really told you guys about who I am a lot other than what you guys see. I really like dogs. I really like puppies. I'm I'm not really a cat person. I really like puppies and dogs. I've ever I've my first dog I've ever had. That dog's her name was Snoopy, um, and I had her when I was in elementary school, and um, she was my I guess first ever best friend. I used to play cops and robbers with her, so. If you don't know what that game is, it's like you pretend you're a robber or you can pretend you're a cop and you kind of chase around uh, whoever is like the opposite. Uh, it's like a common game um, kids used to play, but I used to play that with my dog. Um, I used to pretend that I had to go catch her or something. Um, yeah, and she was a beagle. That was very f interesting memories. That was fun, you know. And what else? I, I, I'm a very good swimmer. I swam. I used to swim in like squad training back in Australia. So that means is I used to go to these swimming programs. I used to go out in competitions. I've been swimming for about a good ten years. So there's no, <laughs> there'll never be a case where I'm afraid of the water. And I used to surf. Which more for more of the reason which I don't, I think I've I'm okay. I used to do a part-time job back in Australia when I was in middle school as a uh, safe 
a lifeguard. Uh, so what they what those are is you know you you make sure everyone stays in between the red flags and no one drowns and like fortunately for me like I've never had to go uh, I guess face that problem but in Australia it's it's very common so I did that as a part time job um, so that was fun um, I ate a jellyfish once by accident and that was probably one of the most traumatic memories I've ever had uh, in the beach because in Australia we have something called blue bottle seasons and what that is is blue bottles are a a type of jellyfish um, and they're blue and they sting but you know it's very common in Australia you have those seasons it's like a, it's like a seasonal time when there's a lot of blue bottles like it's just covered in jellyfish um, and they sting they're very small but they're very potent. Well, I mean, I grew up kind of going into the ocean regardless, because you're, you're, you know, you're in your skin suit, and so uh, you know, one day I was surfing, and I still remember I, I went down because the wave was coming, and you know, you have your board and you, you dive down, but when you go, and when I was coming up for air, um, I went up, and I, you know, because if you want, you kind of gasp for air, but as soon as I opened my mouth. Um, I felt something come in and it was a blue bottle and it just it stung the inside of my neck and all my mouth and I got blisters and ulcers and my neck was swollen I went to the ER um, and yeah it was probably the worst feeling ever because it stung so much I can't I can't forget that <laughs> I mean that was that was interesting. Uh, sorry, I'm just I'm just kind of going back to what I what I'm remembering right now. Yeah, so I mean, mm, hope you guys never had that kind of experience because I did. Um, so I mean, thankfully I'm okay now. Um, the jellyfish uh, did survive. Just just to let you guys know. Um, it didn't die. I didn't eat it. Um, it went on its merry way. You know, I feel like it was curious at the time, so I can't blame it. I mean, I didn't really. It wasn't. It didn't do it intentionally. So. Ten percent battery thing came up. I did not know. I mean, you know. I didn't know it cut short this long. But anyway, um, you cried, someone cried for two hours. Is that because you got stung by a jellyfish? I can totally relate to that. I, I can see where you come from, but luckily you're okay. Um, hmm. You need to go ahead and change your phone. Sorry, I, I have to read it sideways, which, yeah, um, you're right. I mean, I do have a different phone, but that's purely for um, what I'm inspired by. So I do have two phones. One phone is for contacting and pe like people and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. The other phone is actually for my creative space. So what I get inspired by, you know, it could be an image, or it could be a video, I save everything on that phone. It's kind of like a diary, if you were to say, but you know, you can carry it around, it's small, it's easy, compatible. Um, charge your phone, Christian. Your phone just is, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that. And what else? What else do you talk about? I, um, um, hmm. I don't know. I first fell in love with dancing when I was in high school. And I guess I, I can never forget that experience. Because up till high school, I never thought in my life that I could be a dancer or I wasn't, you know, or I could even implicate what dancing is 
I still remember something that came over me and I wanted to tr give it a try and um, yeah I, I locked myself in the room my room and I have a big mirror or I had a big mirror back when I was in middle school high school sorry and I made sure no one was looking first of all because it was embarrassing and I wasn't confident but I made sure no one was looking and I just I just started moving, dancing, if you were to say, squiggling and wiggling and doing all sorts of things and slowly but surely um, I had I built the confidence to show somebody else the squiggling and wiggling and I think that's how it started. You don't really know you know that's the beauty of art or whatever you're passionate about is you don't know it's you don't know what kind of power it has over you because you never really stop to think about it it just happens and I think it, that's literally how everything should be it should just happen you shouldn't have to stop and think about it and analyze it and wonder if this leads to this and this and this you don't you should never treat it as such it should be something that if you want to do it, just do it fuck it who cares? Um, you know. How to meet you in person? Um, well, uh, this is my address. No, I'm kidding. Um, I mean, you know, if it works out, I'll, you know, I guess the whole tour thing will happen again. You know, once everything calms down a little and everything gets better. So yeah, by then I I do believe we will acquaint each other it's not it's never impossible that's what I always say it's you know um, what do you think about what is that Ka Corona I believe you were trying to say Corona um, I think it's devastating um, if anything it's the modern day of the Black Plague and I just, you know, I just, it's, it's a very hard topic because, you know, so many negative things have arised from that, but, you know, one way or the other, it is, it, I think it, it should be redeemed as something that is devastating. Um, the only thing we can do is hopefully hope for a cure, um, you know, and I guess, we have to just try to stay positive, you know, because it is something that will bring out the worst in people and the best in people. But, you know, I think more so, you know, in times like this, everyone should be more united. But I know that's hard because it's, you know, it's just everyone has so many indifferences between each other. It's hard, but what can you do other than stay positive, you know? And I guess aid the uh, the special forces that are really doing something about it and helping. Yeah, it's it's tough. I'm sure it's tough on everyone. You know, I'm sure a lot of plans were canceled, a lot of businesses, you know, a lot of things that should never have ever happened, happened, you know. But yeah, I mean, try to stay positive, you know, try to shed light on it. It's hard, but, you know. What reason you tattoo your body? I... I took a fun, uh, I took an interest in tattoos uh, ever since I was young, honestly. Um, but you know, you get the whole talk from your parents. Like, obviously, you should never tattoo because it's socially unacceptable. Um, you're going to be frowned upon, especially in the Asian culture. Um, you know, you, you're, you're kind of, if you have a tattoo in Asia, um, you know, a lot of, I guess, the older generation, they redeem you as 
being a gangster or, or something like that of that sort so i think it was never a, a good image especially in my era when i was growing up but i mean tattooing is an art you know it's it's something that sticks with you your whole way it's it's pretty much like a diary it's like a diary entry for example if i got this tattoo done when i was 24 years old right when i was 24 and i was with like let's say like a friend back then that i knew and it was right after a soccer match and it was raining and i was so freaked out because back at that time um let's say i broke up with my girlfriend and i was so cut that i just wanted to do something that's a living memory some may be painful but some actually if you if you look at it don't you ever won't you think you will have a clear idea of when you got it and how you were feeling and why you got it and I feel like it's just another reminder of um, a part of your past and a part of who you are. It might not always be like that, but for me, every single one of my tattoos is a is a symbol of that specific moment that I've lived, and it reminds me of who I was, you know, back then, and what was going on in that time of my life. And I like to reflect. A lot you know because again it brings back to the whole idea of you know I feel like nothing lasts the only thing that does are, are memories and certain things that you hold on to and um, I feel like that much more it means something to you I mean obviously some people might tattoo themselves because of the aesthetic of it and but for me everything has a meaning of when I got it and how what I was feeling at that time and what kind of condition I was in and you know what I was you know I, I tend to really really reflect on that um, do you know Pang Chan from Stray Kids pa pa Pang Chan uh, I th yeah I, I do believe so I think I've came I came across a, a video um, I think it was said by I guess you guys um, and he was, I think, jamming to Zombie Pop, I believe. And um, so, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, what I heard was uh, a few of the kids there are from Australia, which for me is a, is already a a good sign because it's so hard to find uh, fellow Australian Koreans in Korea. I know it's crazy. Most of the Koreans you find here are, are American Koreans. So for me, it's something that reminds me of my home so you know and seeing him jam out to dpr and stuff it's yeah it's always it's always so good to see um so yeah i mean i think yeah i'll be down to meet him you know i think i have a few friends that might know him actually so yeah i mean i think it's yeah i feel like i will run into him sooner or later <laughs> so um and mad ups to them stray kids i believe even the name it sounds like it's australia so it's like stray kids i know it's like it's probably not that but australia stray it's, it's a very australian thing um i wouldn't be surprised if it really is derived from that but yeah i mean it's always good to see so yeah, i guess big shout out to them Mm. Do you watch any shows? I watched Dark on Netflix recently. I think it's like a, it's like, I think it's a German drama. But that was really good. Holy shit! If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. It's so twisted, but I love things that kind of catch you off guard. The suspense is crazy. It's called Dark. Uh, it's on Netflix. I'm sure some of you guys have watched it. Some of you haven't, but if you haven't, I think you should watch it. It's not scary. I thought it was a scary 
yeah, I thought it was meant to be scary, but it, it isn't. And that's why I like it. Because I can't watch scary things. I really suck at watching scary things. I'm a scary cat. Mm. Dark is amazing. Have you watched The Walking Dead? I have. But I, I haven't finished it because I, I got to a point where I felt like it was... It's so funny, like, I, The Walking Dead is about zombies, right? But after a certain period of time, it, it stopped being about the zombies. Why? Because there's so many seasons already, like, and zombies were getting old, you know. It, that's pretty ironic. Uh, but the whole idea of zombies were getting old, so they had to find, I feel like they had to find new ways to implicate a story. And eventually it turns into like a like a man like a human versus human type of war, you know? And zombies are just kinda of like whatever, like on the side. <laughs> uh it becomes like a drama of uh I guess human behavior and you know, like everything that comes with it. So in after after a while it didn't it never even became about the zombies. Right? Because yeah, who would want to like keep revolving the story around zombies after like seven seasons? <laughs> uh, what's my favorite movie? That's a very hot question. I think I don't have a, a favorite movie. I mean, that's kind of weird. I have a lot of favorite movies that I've I was influenced by, but I don't think I have a specific favorite movie. Um, have you watched Lucifer? No, I've seen a little scenes from here and there, but not really. Uh, can you? What? Can you? Some, something baby girl. I don't know. It, it's the Aussie accent for me. Um, I feel like I my accent has died a lot. And Kugona, that's something that's very inevitable. Um, because in Korea, well, where I'm at, uh, no one speaks Australian English. They speak a lot of, uh, of American English um, because a lot of the people here are from America and from the States. So I, so you know, whatever you hear, you kind of tend to kind of go along with that, you know, so. Um, yo, no way. It's the whole vibe for me okay <laughs> that's a whole vibe okay I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about this vibe uh, King of listening to lo-fi beats to study yeah i mean i never did that during my high school period because there was no such thing as like a lo-fi playlist during my high school era yes i am a boomer <laughs> do you watch 365 days on netflix no i have not um how tall am i i get this question a lot a lot of people think i'm tall and i don't know where they get that idea from i never <laughs> I've never posted a picture of me looking tall. I've never, I don't think I've ever cared about that. But I think a lot of people get the immediate reaction that I'm very tall. I'm not, I'm 177, 170, 177 or 170, yeah, 177, I think. I don't know what that is in inches. Um, five, five nine i don't know five nine yeah i believe it's five nine um but i think 
a lot of people, even when they meet me, they, they think I come off tall or something. I think it's because I have like, um, I have swimmer shoulders. So I have, I have like, a, I used to swim, so my shoulders are, are big. Um, so I immediately have, I just look somewhat tall, I think. A lot of people say that. Um, so a lot of people 